A couple of episodes ago, I mentioned that I think there was somewhere the money was going besides the pill habit Alex claimed to have. For many reasons, really. One being that most of us realize that amount of money would have bought enough oxy to kill several people. But not only that reason, some of the other reasons will be in upcoming episodes, such as family background, land purchases, associations, but in this video, I want to focus on a little known character that might actually be a big piece in this puzzle. I'm talking about Jerry Rivers. We're also going to hear from Sir Creighton Waters. Yes, I've knighted him here on my channel. So on here he is, Sir Creighton Waters. So stay tuned for this special supplementary episode of The Other 55% with Cassidy O'Connell. On this season of The Other 55%, the trial that consumed the entire true crime community and beyond. And I could see his brain on <laughs> Generating millions of dollars in fees, that was not enough for you. I know you have to see Paul and Maggie during the night times when you're attempting to go to sleep. I'm sure they come and visit you. All these people. On these two exhibits, these were real people that needed this money, is that correct? I'm sure they did. Somebody go to check them. Yes, sir. They, they've already checked them. <laughs> they did check them? Yes, sir. It's official that they're dead? Yes, sir. That's what it looks like. <laughs> Oh, and it might not have been you. It might have been the monster you become. It's the other 55% with Cassidy O'Connell, because we don't know the half of it, and this time, we probably never will. Jerry Rivers is an alleged all-around scammer that has been in trouble multiple times through the years, but we're going to focus on two indictments that I want to go through today. One was filed in August of last year and another filed in November. The August indictment is only two pages, but I believe it packs a huge story and the few words on paper. Attorney Creighton Waters himself had much to say about it in a hearing, and we're going to work our way through what's said there and on these two indictments, starting with the November indictment. Jerry Rivers was booked into the Richland County Jail on January 17th less than a week before Alex's murder trial, where he was found guilty of killing his wife and youngest son, and is now serving two life sentences for that. What's the connection? We'll get to that. But first, a quick background on Mr. Rivers. Jerry Rivers is a 40-year-old father of five who is currently jailed on a 13-count indictment. Now, this is the one that was issued in November, charging him with defrauding the Paycheck Protection Program using a beauty salon that didn't exist while also collecting that sweet government-supplemented pandemic unemployment as a drywall finisher, also from a business that doesn't exist. He collected two draws of $20,833 for a total of $41,666 in 2021 from the PPP program, which was supposed to help businesses keep employees during the COVID-19 pandemic. He collected from phony unemployment claims in the amount of $27,453, the one where he was self-employed as a drywall finisher that didn't exist. Well, that wasn't enough. He went on to collect unemployment in the names of two women without their knowledge at $12,558 each. Amongst the 13 counts of his indictment, there's insurance fraud, financial identity fraud, money laundering, obtaining property by false pretenses, and computer crimes. Some of those are in multiples. But what I really want to focus on is this August 16th, 2022 indictment. Rivers is charged with obstructing state authorities as they pursued Murdoch's money trail. The trail brought them to Spencer Onwin Roberts, a close associate of Jerry Rivers. On August 10th, agents from SLED executed search warrants at multiple locations in Walterboro that were tied to Spencer Roberts. While the agents were searching a gambling house, they came across what appeared to be illegal drugs, such as crack and heroin. At the time of the hearing, the lab reports were still pending on whether or not these were actually crack and heroin. This compounded the search and led to an additional warrant that included phones. Rivers, who was not under arrest, left the scene with Robert's cell phone, which had been plugged into an outlet. When the agents realized this, they told Rivers the next day 
to return the phone. The day after that, Rivers left a cell phone in a mailbox for them, but the stolen one was an iPhone and he left an Android. He was subsequently arrested. Let's listen to the hearing. The subtitles are from a Fox recording and are often incorrect, so please listen closely to what they're saying to get the real meaning of what they're talking about. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Good afternoon. Uh, Your Honor, we're here on uh, State versus Jerry K. Rivers. Uh, this is State Grand Jury Indictment 2022 GS 4721. Mr. Rivers is coming around and is present uh, with his counsel, Lawton Matthews, uh, and he has been indicted for a single count of. Um, Obstruction of justice. I have served a copy of the indictment on uh, counsel, and Your Honor, if I can approach, I'll copy the indictment for you. Yes, sir. Your Honor, Mr. Rivers was arrested uh, this past weekend. Uh, to give you a little background about this obstruction of justice charge, and, and obviously that's a very serious charge, and it relates to ultimately uh, uh, some of the, the spinoff investigations in the uh, Alec Murdoch matter. Uh, there were search warrants uh, served on August 10th at various locations associated with uh, Spencer Roberts, who uh, has appeared for your honor last week. Um, Mr. Rivers is a known and longtime associate, uh, associate of Mr. Roberts, and at one uh, particular location, at Smoke Road, the location that has that sort of outbuilding where uh, they hang out and gamble, uh, of course, Mr. Roberts was there, and Mr. Rivers was there. Uh, his cell phone, Mr. Rivers' cell phone was plugged in on the charger in that gambling area. And Your Honor, uh, the individuals that were in that area were brought out as the search warrant was being served. They were, of course, uh, put in that location. They weren't arrested, except for Mr. Roberts, because there was a warrant for his arrest. Uh, but they were sat down in a particular location uh, while law enforcement secured the scene and began the search, which they advised everyone. Clean out your pockets, and cell phones are uh, all being uh, secured pursuant uh, to the search warrant, authorized to be uh, taken pursuant to the search warrant. Uh, they went into that um, outbuilding where Mr. Rivers was, as well as others, Mr. Roberts, uh, and in there, of course, as Your Honor has heard, they found uh, what appears to be at least about 15 grams of purported heroin. Uh, the labs are still pending on that at this time, Your Honor, uh, but that was in that very location. Uh, additionally, uh, after all of this ended, there were some crack found in the location near where Mr. Uh, Rivers was sitting. Again, uh, the labs were pending on that as well. But the real reason we're here, Your Honor, is uh, despite the fact that Mr. Rivers' phone was in um, the outbuilding on a charger, uh, when it came time for law enforcement to uh, allow those who were not being arrested to leave, but they were all clearly advised that the cell phones were being retained pursuant to that search warrant, uh, indeed, after the narcotics were found, another search warrant was obtained, which included cell phones. Uh, Mr. Rivers, who had been sitting next to Mr. Roberts uh, while law enforcement did what it needed to do, uh, got up and grabbed Mr. Roberts' cell phone and left the scene. Law enforcement, once they realized that phone was missing, uh, uh, went and found Mr. Rivers and approached him and had a conversation with him. And Mr. Rivers, and this would have been the next day, and uh, Mr. Rivers admitted that he had taken the phone and that he had given it to Spencer Roberts' people. Uh, law enforcement told him he needed to go get that phone back. Uh, a day after that, Mr. Rivers uh, called law enforcement and said, I have the phone, left it in a mailbox. Uh, the phone that had been taken by Mr. Rivers, uh, that was evidence at a uh, search warrant scene, uh, was an iPhone, but the one he returned was an Android phone. When confronted with this, Mr. Rivers pretty much said words to, you can't blame a guy for trying, or words to that effect. Uh, and he, of course, was uh, arrested then for obstruction of justice as it relates to uh, stealing evidence from an active search warrant being conducted by law enforcement. Uh, Mr. Rivers, um, additionally, Your Honor, as we look at his involvement in continued investigations, I've mentioned a very sizable quantity of opiates uh, that is still pending investigation, but it was found in a room uh, and Mr. Rivers was present. Um, he was also, there was crack found where he had been. How does this tie in with Alex? Creighton Waters said Rivers and Roberts were downstream beneficiaries of the more than $8 million that Alex stole from his clients. And additionally, on top of that, uh, Mr. Rivers is part of the investigation in as much as he's one of the individuals downstream from Alec Murdoch to Spencer Roberts, to uh, Alec Murdoch to Eddie Smith to Spencer Roberts and other individuals who received 
uh, substantial amounts of checks. And uh, this is high five figures for Mr. Rivers of checks that he received that ultimately had their source uh, from uh, funds of Alec Murdoch that are subject to multiple indictments at this time. That investigation remains pending. Mr. Rivers, would you like to speak concerning the violence? Um, <clears throat> no, sir. And, um, Counselor, you're mentioning these miles per feet, uh, and you also said he's unemployed. Uh, it's my understanding he currently is, Your Honor. How is he feeding these five miles that you're referring to? My, uh, Your Honor, it's my understanding that he's trying to do odd jobs and things of that nature. Um, you know, if, if uh, you know, some type of manual labor or something like that comes along, he does it in order to try and, and provide for his family. Solicitor, you're I mean, Attorney General, you mentioned um, Mr. Rivers and checks. Yes, sir. Um, in what context are you referring to that? So, as Your Honor is aware, there are allegations out there that substantial funds, much of which are allegedly misappropriated money, uh, flowed from Alec Murdoch uh, out various ways. A lot of that went through Curtis Eddie Smith, uh, and then they continued downstream to other accomplices that helped cash and launder that money. Uh, and that would go through Spencer Roberts and Mr. Rivers was one of those. Uh, so far to date, the investigation has revealed uh, in 2021 alone about $89,000 worth of checks that went to Mr. Rivers that he negotiated. Anything further? Nothing further from the state, Your Honor. Your Honor, again, at this time, uh, these are allegations against Mr. Rivers and he maintains his innocence. A SLED special agent testified at Alex's trial that a sales ledger had been found in Curtis Smith, or better known as Cousin Eddie's, home. Also during the murder trial, Alex claimed he was paying $50,000 a week to buy drugs from Cousin Eddie, who was purchasing them from members of a drug ring now known as the Walterboro Cowboys Street Gang, which is a whole big story on its own. In Episode 5, Gloria Satterfield Part 2, we went through all the checks that Alex had written to Eddie from his fake Forge account, as well as from his personal account where he had deposited the stolen money that had been laundered through Forge. So far, investigations have shown that in 2021, $89,000 of the stolen money had made its way to Rivers. I'm assuming the rest of those details will become better known as we approach the financial trial. Sir Creighton Waters, known for his tenacity and thoroughness, will surely get to the bottom of this. And with the likes of Jerry Rivers, his associates, and the Walterboro Cowboy Gang, I don't know why it's so fun to say that, but the Walterboro Cowboy Gang, this feels like just a beginning to me of where the money trail will lead, as I contend there was so much more going on than a simple pill addiction, and that Alex is still trying his best to keep it hidden from the light. I really can't wait to hear where all of this goes, and as always, as I get new updates, I'll be sure to let you know right here Till then, this is Cassidy O'Connell saying stay well and stay tuned.